today i'm going to give you a demo on how you can build a to do app with business logic on hasura v3 my name is suraj and i am a senior engineer at hasura so what is in this demo i'm going to show you i want to focus a little bit more on what, the things you were not able to do with v2 uh, things like how you can code type script on hasura and then how you can deploy those functions to hasura cloud and how you can introduce business logic stuff like data transformation input validations api integrations and so on all right time to code uh, so i'll go to the uh, uh, vs code and uh, i have a project uh, set up which is similar to what rishi has just created but uh, the tables that i created is slightly different because we are trying to we are building a to do app and for that i have two tables one is users and that we have to dos uh, as another table and i have everything running on my local machine uh, all right now let's start with uh, how you can create writing a uh, functions on hasura for that uh, what we have to do is we have to create a functions folder and then i'm going to create a file called index.ts and to point to this function uh, i also need to create a config.json file uh, which is having some uh, important configurations as you can see functions is defined here and then we have some additional configurations now let's go ahead and create a small functions here as basic as possible uh, i'm going to call this hello world export function hello world and then i'm going to create a function definition i'm simply going to return a text called hello world all right now let's go ahead and execute or run this function on 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 the local machine and for that i'm using the dino run command because it's a dino function where we are running all these things and it is uh, also added with a hasura type command sd so that it make sure that these functions are exposed and introspected uh um, in the form which hasura can understand so keep in mind that i have not created any tiles but uh, the hasura connector will be able to uh, introspect and uh, generate the schema for me all these things are internal so that we don't have to worry about uh, uh, how it is uh, being done all right now we have the server running on 8100 uh, port i'll just copy that uh, for uh, creating a data connector so as you know that uh, in hasura v3 everything is a data connector so i am going to create a data connector called uh, functions uh, i am going to create a file called functions.xml under the data connector directory and then i am going to create a kind data connector and then i am going to do uh, the control space to get the suggestions and i am going to call this functions again i need some configurations to uh, set up this for that i am leveraging the auto completion uh, but i just need a single url because i don't have a read and write uh, configuration for the specific uh, dif different configuration for this i'm simply going to paste this uh, url all right and here the magic comes in uh, so keep in mind that i have installed hasura extension for this and then i'm going to do uh, hasura refresh data connector and hasura will ask me like which data connector we want to uh, uh, you know introspect all right here we go we have uh, the schema automatically populated in this file now let's go ahead and create the commands uh, for the same i'm going to create functions dot html and then what i want to do is i want to create or i want to track those commands uh and for that either i can say hey uh uh track the procedures from data connector otherwise i can say hey track everything from that data connector so i'm going to go with the second option so that it's a single command uh, uh i'm going to select the data connector here all right we are all set to create our first data connector and if you think from the uh, uh, infrastructure point of view here we have a small problem because i have my server running on my local machine but i want the developer experience to be on hasura cloud right and for that how will i bring this uh, to hasura cloud right uh, i'm going to do a, a secure tunnel way of uh, handling this 
uh, we'll be sharing more details on the secure connect soon but uh, for the context right now i have a tunnel running a tcp tunnel running with the hasuga uh, cli you just have to do hasuga daemon start and then hasuga tunnel create uh, the localhost uh, 8100 and i have a similar setup running here i'll just show, show you the tunnel uh, running on my local in real quick and as soon as you create a tunnel you get a tunnel endpoint like this this tunnel endpoint can be used uh, to point your um, uh, data connector endpoints or maybe even postgres um, uh, connection endpoint here all right so uh, now we are all set to create our first build i'm going to create a build and i would like to call this hello world i've added the description so that i can identify the build real quick all right i got the build created by the way i have installed hasuga cli for this uh, uh, i'm going to click on this console url and see uh, how my build is uh, created all right so i have my mutation uh, uh, available on this left section and if you want to create a query you can also see that the postgres thing that we added is also available here and uh, for this demo i'll uh, i mean for, for now i'll just query the hello world that we just created awesome we have we have the data coming from from the local machine to hasuga cloud and i have my api resolved here let's see if it is really uh, uh, you know getting my changes to show that i'll say hello world from uh, suraj all right i'm going to save this and i'm going to look at how dino is detecting the changes and immediately acting upon and then uh, you know making sure that the new procedure is updated now let's query this again awesome i got uh, the latest update here so this is how the developer experience of uh, you know bringing the business logic to hasuga looks like now let's fast forward a little bit and see how we can uh, improve uh, implement a little complex things i'm going to copy the uh, function which i created here okay to save some time i'll just uh, put everything in place so i have updated my index.ts file uh, with two functions one is insert to do's and update to do's and i also have um, some custom logic i'll just remove this first and then show you the first one all right yeah if you notice this function here i have a uh, input validation logic and i have input sanitization uh, logic uh, and then uh, i am executing this uh, you know sql queries on the postgres database so as we have a uh, typescript runtime to play around we have all the new things um, that we can implement so anything you can write in typescript uh, you can write it uh, you can you can get it working on hasuga now all right uh, so i have done the same thing like i've uh, created uh, my data connector here and then i also have um, my uh, commands tracked here you want to show uh, if i if you want to quickly see how it has happened i'm going to do this again tag all procedures functions and everything for me it automatically generated i did the data uh, i mean you can also do the uh, refresh database uh, stuff here but yeah for the to save some time i'm uh, doing it a little faster now let's create another build i'm going to call this uh, to do again using the hasuga cli for that hasuga build create that's all you need and you can also pass a description optionally i'm also going to open the new console url uh, actually you can do the same thing by selecting the list of builds here uh, 
yeah in this demo as you can see the hello world is gone because i removed that function and now i have a to do app uh, insert to do uh, mutation and then i am going to get uh, the id to do and user id here let's say uh, i want to group tickets and the user id corresponding to that is one for this demo all right let's see how it works all right so basically it has included in uh, you know added the uh, to do um, onto the database let's go specify that here to do and probably the id i can see the same data is being added here and now let's take a look into how uh, how we can introduce the business logic here so for the for example i have added two conditions here one is the to do has to be a valid text with more characters and the second one is the to do should not contain any bad words and for that purpose i have added an npm i have used an npm module here so just like this you can also include the npm, NPM modules or maybe dino modules and then get your um, typescript function up and running let's see how it is uh, working in action uh, i'm going to create i'm trying to create a to do without any uh, valid to do um, text i got an error as expected maybe let's try to create a um, uh, to do with a bad word uh, i probably type a little uh, yeah uh, maybe i'll say uh, what is the meaning of hell hell is considered as a bad word uh, so just for the demo i'll be using that um, all right we got an error but maybe i'll just say uh, what is the meaning of good so it should work here we go we got the latest data we'll query the same from the database we got the same all right so uh, we have uh, we have seen uh, how the input validation works here or how we can introduce it's, it's mostly the TypeScript uh, thing at the moment, but soon we'll be adding more support to different sort of programming languages so that if you are a Go developer, you can type in, you can program in Go. If you are a Java developer, you can do the same. And uh, on the data transformation side, I have also included something like a special character filter so that if I pass something like a special character here, and then if I try to execute, the, the special character is filtered out and then I got the data inserted in the uh, in the clean way and now let's see how we can introduce a uh, uh, introduce a uh, api integration and for that i'm using a slack notification soon after the uh, data is being inserted let's uh, yeah let's probably add this at the end of the execution and then uh, I don't have to create a new build because everything, uh, the input, output types and everything remains the same. Let's see. Uh, uh, get me a Slack notification. Uh, I'm executing this. All right, this was executed. And I have a test Slack instance. Uh, awesome. We got the, uh, you know, the message delivered onto my Slack instantly all right now let's do a quick recap on what we have done here so, so basically for the development environment i have a hasuga cloud uh, account and then i have a hasuga uh, i mean i have a postgres database running on my local machine and then i have typescript functions uh, running on my local machine so the dino instance is running on 8100 and uh, the hasuga tcp uh, secure kernel is uh, allowing me to allowing Hasuga Cloud to communicate between uh, the local port, uh, local host 8100, and getting the data back of fetching, uh, allowing Hasuga Cloud to fetch the data from this function. Uh, and I am also communicating the ex external APIs from this TypeScript runtime, and I am communicating with the local Postgres database. This will significantly help uh, the function development to Hasuga, uh, Hasuga uh, Cloud in a faster way because you're not uh, changing anything on or uh, you're not redeploying re everything onto Hasuga Cloud. And once you're done with the local development environment, uh, local development, then you can uh, deploy those functions to Hasuga Cloud 
and the Haskell cloud can execute the functions and um, you know get the uh, data of the function proce function or procedure resolved in a faster way. You can also uh, make these functions. Uh, you can you can uh, get these functions a mutation of query just by adding the uh, comments um, as pure. All right. So to save some time, I'll save I'll share this repository with all of you so that you can uh, get to know how you can configure a fun procedure or functions. Uh, and, but yeah, that's for now. Uh, thanks for watching. Stay tuned for more updates. <laughs>